Hello everyone, my name is Shem and welcome to Deep X Kitchen. So today we are starting a new series of tutorials for creating a framework to use AI in visual effects. I tried to explain this in my earlier videos, but it wasn't clear enough uh, the message that I'm trying to deliver. So this time I have some slides, I hope it makes it easier. The main problem when you are trying to use AI in visual effects is that not all the artists workstations are capable to run a machine learning solution on it. So in that case, we are going to use HTTP requests, which works exactly like you are calling a website. When you are typing google.com, then you are receiving a response from the server with the data that you have to show in the browser. To make it real quick and short, this is the type of HTTP request we are getting. So you have always a server and then there is a REST API which manages the connection between the client side and the server side. So your client could be a mobile phone, a tablet or a computer. And these are the types of requests that we usually use. And mainly we are focusing on the get, post, put and delete. Get is usually just for receiving data from the server when you are requested, like when you are requesting, for instance, google.com, it responds with um, the page of Google. Uh, post, it's when you are trying to add some object into your request. So maybe you want to submit your uh, login information when you type down the username and the password. That means that you are also posting um, your user and password information so the server will receive it and then make the authentication and then show you which data you can see. You can see. Um, put is usually used for updating information in some cases. So for example, if you are working on a forum and uh, you just made uh, a topic or an article and then you wanted to change it, then you just use the put function for updating this article because you don't need to post a new article and delete the old one or receive this article. So put is usually used to kind of comparing with the old one and the new one and just putting the changes inside it. The comparing is done in the back end, like you have to implement your own way of doing the updating functions. But in general, put is used for updating what you have already posted before. And delete is so obvious that it's just deleting the resource. So if you're going to build our framework, we are mainly using the post requests because um, in that case, we are going to have many clients, which is the artist workstation, and it will be directly calling the back end, which will redirect the request into the server that has the machine learning solution on it and then gives back the result. So most of the cases, the artist will be giving data to the back end, will be giving like an image, giving a 3D model, giving point cache, FX, whatever. And then the back end will just figure out what it should do. Usually you have to implement this by yourself and then it will give it to the server. The server do the processing and calculations and then respond back with the answer. Then it will uh, send back to the client side. So this is exactly how it will be like. This is the server side. This server side is um, including all the important dependencies. It has all the environment variables, all um, the libraries that used for Python, and it will be running under Ubuntu. So most of the tutorials, like the upcoming tutorials will be running on Ubuntu. And then we have the REST API, which is the back end. And this back end will be uh, done inside Flask. Flask is a Python uh, library, which is um, creating a back end for you that can make connection with the back end and the front end. So last time when I did it, I did it with uh, ASP.NET. It was in C Sharp, but I prefer to use Python since everything here is actually using Python. And uh, here are the client side. So the client, which is the artist workstation, doesn't matter if he's using Mac or Windows or Linux, um, because in the end, um, he will just basically give some kind of information, giving an image, giving an object file, whatever, then the back end will receive it. And the back end will talk to the server side, the server side do all the processing stuff and then respond back with the result. Okay. So today it will be just like talking about the concept or the prototype of how this is going to work. And I will show you real quick what I mean with HTTP requests. So if I'm opening the command prompt here and just go for Python. Okay. Uh, for Python, we have a library called requests and requests is doing exactly the same. Like you have a browser asking for a website and so, so I will show you real quick what I mean. So import requests. 
and then we can do requests dot get https uh, www.google.com okay and we can just call it the request here so we have done a request right now now we can print out the result from this request so that's what we got as you can see here it's under a tag of html so that's basically a web page that's when you are writing down in your normal browser in google chrome or firefox google.com that's the same response that it gets but the difference is that the browser is capable to show off this data so if i try to write out this data it will look like this it's open let's say google.html and then it's writing as f and then f dot write uh, we call it request dot text good so here we got this google.html if you just open it it will look exactly like google so the only difference that this um, images were actually located relatively to google itself so when we are downloading it we cannot see it anymore but yeah that's basically how it looks like so in the upcoming videos i'll be showing how we are going to build the back end side and the client side and we are going to use mainly uh, PyQt and uh, Python. And in the future, the thing is that why I went for Ubuntu that time, because in the future, if at some point you just decided, hey, I'm going to go to the cloud, you can simply just rent one of the Amazon um, cloud services. You can literally upload your whole local server to the cloud, and then you can access your uh, server side from any client that is using the internet only because if you have cloud services of course you can access from anywhere from your mobile device from your laptop from your work and so on so it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a lot of information i hope i can just deliver it in an easier way i tried to make it as easy as possible right now in a very short term and yeah this is going to be a big framework i will post it always on my github so that's it. So make sure to subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends, and stay tuned. See you next time. Bye bye. Now, here comes the music. Boom, 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 boom. I'll shoot you right down. Boom, 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 boom.